everyone. Welcome to this leadership panel uh, with the Matic leadership team. Um, this panel will be about Matic starting off as an independent project. Um, there will be questions asked. Um, they can also be asked questions from the audience as well. Uh, but first, I'll let uh, the leadership team uh, introduce themselves, uh, and we'll uh, we'll start off with uh, with Ruth. Okay, sure. Hi, uh, my name is Ruth Jeesley. My pronouns are she, her, and I am project lead for Mortic. All right, Matthias. Hi, I'm Matthias. I'm the the product uh, lead at uh, from uh, 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 from the Motic project, and uh, I'm uh, yeah, I love technical stuff. <laughs> okay, Jan. Hello, I'm Jan Linhart, or you can call me John if you cannot pronounce the sub J. Um, and um, I am a developer at Acquia, and I can spend my time um, working on in the community. And Eki. Uh, if you want to com combine John and Jan, you can even say Johan, some do that. But, <laughs> no, uh, I, I'm Eki, uh, based in, in Germany. I'm the team lead of the community team in Modic Project. And yeah, I'm really excited, excited about the topic, so can't wait to get going. Right. And Toby. Hi everyone, my name is Olua Tobi. I lead the marketing team for Mautic and also co-organize the Mautic Meetup Lagos, Nigeria. All right, okay. Let's get to the most broad question. So what does it mean to be an independent open source project? Who, who will take this one? Ruth? Yeah, I can take this one. Okay. Uh, so for me, it means uh, being truly an open source project where we define and set our own goals, our vision and what have you, and that there isn't any kind of organization or corporate control over the open source project. So we're not like uh, being, yeah, we don't have an organization that's directing where we are going in the future, but that's actually up to the community to decide and determine. Others might have some uh, some alternative definitions. Okay. No, I think, oh, sorry, go ahead, Eki, go ahead, go ahead. I, th I think technically it is definitely the one exact definition and it is the one thing that changed uh, because in the past, as, as you mentioned in, in your state of the nation, um, there has been this development over time where now for the first time there is no such entity in control of, of Mordic or the brand or whatever. Um, for the project, it, it means a huge difference though, or even, even for outsiders. For some it's uh, philosophical, for some, for some it's, it's really economical. It, it really means that, that the nature of this project is now entirely different. It, it is a a an independent thing uh it is in 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 the hands of the community um also the, the other way around the community is in charge nobody else is going to stand up for it um and uh for many out there i know it makes a difference in in motivation for, to go all in with his project it's it's just just a different animal if you go contribute to the cause of a commercial entity in the end, or contribute to a cause where, where we know by definition, this is just owned by the community. So for myself, I, I have to add that it's not such a big deal when, when uh, the, the first iterations came, like the governance model, uh, the shift to Acquia, I think we already had a ton of control. So Acquia was a very generous owner of the rights uh, and, and uh, controller. Um, but that's, of course, that was st 
state of the there's a status quo that was no guarantee that it's, that it's going to be there uh, like that in five years so now we're in a safe place which which is perfect for a true open source project but but on the other hand it's it's a lot of um responsibility too yeah i, I was going to say uh, my my reaction would be exactly the same like it's twofold and yeah i think it's it's both a challenge and it's both it's it's both i, I really i really find it cool and it's both a challenge also to ensure that it's that that somehow the sustainability uh, uh that we can find the sustainability and that's exactly like you pointed out previously uh, Ruth. that's yeah that's a challenge but we'll get there if we, we we can we learn how to explain or explain the value of being an independent open source project and we explain that to companies and with the same beliefs or even without the same beliefs at this point but we can ensure that it's also a valid solution to go that direction or to 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 use uh, open source uh, software and tooling then yeah I, I really believe that we will get there Yep. Can, I, can I add a line to that? Because I, I don't really think it's a big selling point to if we want to convince people uh, of open source, of the concept of open source. So people who are not convinced of open source or are on the, on the, on the verge, um, that's not going to be a big point for them. But on the other hand, there, there are people out there who are pretty open source minded already. We don't need to be convinced uh, open source, but but uh, this thing had been a red flag in the past. That this is even true for companies, or for commercial users of Mordic, um, that um, it's more li like a, a checkbox that now we can tick and we could not in the past. Yeah, I, I, I meant it more in that direction. More like yeah, I meant it more in that direction, like an enabler to. Be able to also to indeed check the checkbox and it's like get the checkbox checked here and it's yeah, yeah. Yes, uh, that leads on to uh, to another question. Uh, Acquia being very generous uh, to to the project now. The financial contributions are coming from different directions because it's now an open project. Uh, your point made is that it's more accessible to sponsor uh, now that is um, not under the wings of a corporate entity anymore. How will that impact and benefit the financial stability and uh, the opportunities that brings? I think for sure it will open doors to more opportunities. There have been lots of times where I've applied for open source benefits of some kind or another to support the project and been turned away because of that commercial involvement, because we are not seen to be truly open source. Um, so from the kind of perspective of grants and loans and that kind of thing, it was always a challenge. So it does definitely open up some new um, avenues. But at the same time, it is also going to be a challenge, you know, because we have to develop our own uh, financial baseline now, whereas we didn't have to do that before. Okay, can you lift uh, a, tip, a tip of the, the veal on how that is going to happen? Uh, sure, Eki, did you want to say something? Sorry. Yeah, bef before we go there, I, I wanted to say, uh, A, to, to point to what has been said in the presentation of yours before, where, where we discussed that a little bit, and B, uh, that I think that we are now in a situation that we are forced to get to another maturity level as a community. I mean, so far, we have been nurtured by somebody else and uh, so it was more or less worry free and now we have to take care of ourselves and uh, first make sure that we get to survival level i'm pretty sure we can do that and then beyond that and, and um, accelerate that that financial capabilities and as a next challenge make sure to allocate these resource resources properly because that's a, issue that's an issue in all open source projects now that you have a little bit of money at hand 
that is beyond administrative uh, costs, what do we do with it? And how, how does it impact uh, the contribution out there? Um, so that's going to be interesting, but, but it is important because we want to get more mature as, as a project and as a community. And so I'm, once again, I'm, I'm excited. I'm happy we're there and we're going to make it. Yes. All right. So with becoming more mature, there's also uh, more responsibility, um, which brings us to the governance model. Um, the governance model, uh, it's, uh, it's not yet finalized, uh, but it's in a, in a state uh, of, of discussion at the moment. Um, when, will, when will it be finalized and um, what, what are the uh, obstacles to overcome to come to a final governance model that is right for the Mati community at this stage of its maturity? Uh, I can speak to this one. So in terms of the timings, we actually have it open until the midnight on the 23rd of June on the forum for people to talk about what has been proposed. And initially, right now, it's just a proposal. So it's not like this is what is happening in Mortic. It's some ideas for what we might want to consider. And so the idea is that we have those discussions respectfully we try to find a way to take on board the feedback that people are providing in each of the forum threads and then get that section to a point where everyone can agree that they're happy for us to proceed and create then a first draft of the new model, which we will then share with the community to review it in its final version, basically. Um, and then we need to find out a way to actually decide whether to adopt that or not, which is still a slight work in progress on my part. So I would say I did by the end of next month, we will have something in place in situ. Uh, in the end, it is obviously a bit of chicken and egg problem because somebody needs to decide how decision are ma decisions are made. Um, when you say we, Ruth, can you can you illustrate who is we? Yeah, so... There is the royal we. I don't know if you have that in other languages, but we have that in, in English. But um, the, yeah, I, I don't know how to explain that. But anyway, so currently we have the um, community council, which is currently still the decision making body of the project. So ultimately, the community council will be the body that decides to adopt the new governance model. I know it sounds a bit weird that they're voting to kick themselves out, but that's kind of what is in the governance at the moment. Um, but in terms of deciding that that is the model we want to adopt, ideally, I want us to actually put that out to the community for review. And then I feel like it should also be um, the leadership team, the community council, who actually are the ones who say, yes, we're going to go ahead on this based on the fact that the majority of the people in the community are happy for us to move forwards. Does that answer the question sufficiently? Mine? Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. uh, I may mean, maybe some people out there who are not completely familiar of what has been outlined. Um, mm -hmm. Maybe we step back a little bit and, and give those uh, outlines. And, and I want to focus on, on the import, most important parts. One is we are not having any sort of institution. We are not founding an NGO, no Mordic association or anything like that. Um, in an association, there would be a clear process like, like uh, founding members, agreeing on some bylaws, and then uh, kicking it off. Here we are something different, uh, something bodiless, I don't know. Uh, but, but on the other hand, there is an existing, or there are existing institutions, there are existing a ton of ex people in the community. And we, as the former embodiments, um, are, of course, striving to, to find a way uh, to, to get ideas signed off by the community, although this community is, is bodyless at that point. So. Uh, I think Ruth, you already mentioned it in, in your talk. 
we really ask as many people as possible out there to to give us any sort of feedback, including positive feedback on on whatever comes out in the forum thread in, on the 30, 23rd, right? Um, and give us as the community council a good foundation to start off with. And then last last part there, part of this um, governance model, aka bylaws, if, if it was a, an NGO, um, is the, that we have a, some some rules on on voting. So so there is decision making. There is the question: who is allowed to vote? Uh, who has how many votes? Spoiler one. Um, and uh, once we have this initial situation going forward, then we will have general assemblies and people who vote on things and are able to change things. But for this initial chicken and egg problem, that's a process. Yeah, and actually at the moment, the, I am the kind of person who has the deciding vote on a lot of things. Um, so if we do get to a point, then I could just say, yes, this is the direction we're going into. But I do feel like it's important. It's collaborative. So, yeah. All right. In terms of the, the proposed uh, membership model, could, could you lift a, a tip of the view there? How, how will it look like? Uh, yeah, so there was lots of very vigorous discussion on this, shall I say, back and forth about how, how we uh, give people the option to vote, you know, and that swung from everyone, from people saying anyone who comes off the street should be able to vote to only people who contribute this much money should be able to vote to, you should only be able to vote if you actually give something back as a contributor. So what we've tried to do is find a way to make it fair for people so that what's being proposed currently is you, you join a community channel, the Slack or forums, whatever, we call that a basic membership. Like you're, you're a member of the Mortic community, but you don't have voting rights. And you can get voting rights. We're proposing three ways. Firstly, by financially contributing. And that is really awesome because that would enable us to have a revenue stream. So if people can contribute, what we're proposing is there's a base rate for the US of $100. And then your country will be prorated based on the cost of a Big Mac. It's how we decide partner contribution tiers. And generally speaking, it works quite well. So it would be less for somewhere where it's less US dollars for a Big Mac, for example. So financially contributing is one way. Um, practically contributing is another way. We've had lots of contentious debates about what is enough as a practical contributor and how we decide what is enough. And that's still undecided. So we're, that's in flux. But we're talking about maybe spending about five hours a month contributing to Mortic. So an hour a week doing something that contributes to Mortic. Um, and this would be like a self-certification. So you would say, I want to become a member with voting rights because I'm a contributor. We fill in a form, we look at your contribution history and we'd say yes or no. The third one, this one's a bit contentious as well, is if you have done amazing, amazing things for Mortic, I mean, we're talking like the foundational engineers of Mortic, and you're no longer involved in Mautic anymore. Your career has changed, you're doing other things, but you've made some amazing contributions. We're also proposing having the option to have people who are fellows. And those are people who have voting rights, but they're not active in the com community. They don't have to financially contribute, but they are able to vote if they want to. And that's just for our elders, the people who have really contributed a lot, but are not necessarily involved. It's a nice way to say thank you to those people, to recognize that contribution, but it is contentious and some people don't like it. So we are having discussions on that, whether to keep that or not. So that's the proposal that we're at at the moment. And that's on the forums. You can have a, have a look at that. Yeah, I find it funny that this, thing, this fellow thing, maybe the traditional term would be honorary member or something like that, uh, is a point of discussion because Honestly, who cares? It's not a big deal either way. So, oh. 
Um, I would like to add that, that in this setup, as it is suggested or proposed by now, um, companies are not members, right? So we, we have the tr traditional sponsorship option for companies, but it's not, it has nothing to do with, with a membership or voting rights. Um, period. Yeah, I mean, it. I think it gets quite tricky when you start give it, talking about how to allow companies to have voting rights. You know, how, how does that work? If you have a company of 500 people, does every single person get voting rights? Does a company get one vote, you know? So I think that's why we decided to make it about the humans who are making the decisions rather than the companies. Mm -hmm. And one of our core values is like people over product and, and company, you know, and what have you. So. Yeah. My only observa yeah. observation is that when you look at, again, Drupal Association or any other, or those other associations that I know, uh, company membership is a big deal because uh, that's much more money involved and, and not necessarily more votes, it's more dedication. So Yeah, it, I guess we could make the company yeah. sponsorships actually be called membership rather than sponsorship. Well, I think yeah, I think a bit, the wording can be tricky on that level. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, th I think it makes sense. Yeah, to to open that to open uh, that up for discussion. I think it. Yeah, I, I understand where that comes from. If you compare it indeed to the Drupal community, where where uh, I'm also very active in, indeed it's it's different different naming, but it means the same if you purely look at what it entails. So it's uh, yeah, it makes yeah, sense. I think Drupal you, you do have both. You you do have. Uh... Uh, individual and, and organizational memberships, and mm -hmm. you have partnership programs or things like that. Yeah, yeah, but they are they are not. It's not one or the other. That's what I mean, it's not. It's not. Uh, you can indeed be both at the same Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Yes, yeah, you're yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Um, what I find interesting is to to take that back to the question of financial stability or or revenue streams, and uh, what and in the end, one thing. Where we get money from is support by the community uh, without the request for any return on invest and the other general category is basically selling values like here's a sponsorship for an event where people actually hope for some return on invest or here's some uh, uh, tr trial accounts where people hope to convert those into paid accounts um, so the latter is more, more really commercial things, and the more attractive it all gets, the, the, the better the hopes for Mordic to make that substantial part of the revenue stream. But the other part, I think, is the more important part here, is that, that people are willing to support the cause without asking for, for um, value back other than maybe recognition or or the right to vote so um just m in my personal opinion that also applies to to companies who build their business on modic uh, who also are willing to support uh and to show their support uh, and then to put it on a reasonable foundation reasonable foundation and um with, without this is hope for direct uh return on invest yes it's true for for general sponsorship as well I just, just want, to, want to come back to the, the relevance of the, the pieces in our revenue stream and i think this company support uh is, is a big part of it we shouldn't think small all right I think that that answers a lot of questions. I see we only have a couple of minutes left. There is one question from uh, from the crowd, from uh, Leonardo Schuler, a web specialist at IBM. And the question is, is there an open source community owned project that you feel inspired by and what model? Um, okay, I, I wouldn't know if anyone, but if you should ask me, there is an open source project. I really love how they go about um, their uh, 
their product, and that is Chatwood. So Chatwood is an open source um, inbox management where you can be able to manage your social media inboxes. So um, that is one open source project. I really love how they operate. So I think that is something we could copy some part of their marketing strategies for multi. And which ones would that be? Oh, okay. So if you ask me, um, I, um, I think they, they, they do more around talking about the product in the marketing sense, about how each of their features work, and um, also have a kind of a design system that also works for each of their products, uh, for each of their um, articles. So I'm talking from the marketing side. So every other person might have I might have their own part of the products that the other open source projects that might be something they like. All right. Okay. If there are any questions, please put them uh, put them in the chat. But for our remaining time, I think final question is to just do the tour of the the leadership team and uh, ask them what are you most excited about for the future i can start uh, if no uh, it's okay yeah i'm like i said in the beginning i'm a really technical person so i i become happy of automation going smooth processes clean code stuff like that and i really really see a big change when i started in the motor community two years ago and where we are at now I still remember the first, literally the first things I did was ensure that the output of our PHP unit test was actually without errors in between. It's something very stupid, but it's just by, by ensuring that it becomes clean and automated and there is, there is value in what you see. It's the first step in ensuring that new contributors also, if they come from another tooling, another project, they actually don't think, what is this? What is going on here? Why is it not following like so to say industry standards. And that's why I, I really, I'm really happy with, and that's why, and for those who, for the recording of my, my session, that's why I'm so, uh, that's per, my personal opinion. That's why I'm so happy with Motic 5 being a maintenance release also to ensure that we have a new, that we are going to the next step to ensure we have a foundation that's steady and stable. And that's, that's what I'm happy about. And that's why I also look forward to Motic 6 and 7 and so on to ensure that we keep that, running and, and moving forward. That's, that's what I want to achieve in the, in the next releases of Motic. Well, I have, to, I have to admit, I find it hard to make up my mind here because I, I, I am actually excited about what you're talking about, including all this process level and, and uh, internal cleanness, etc. But I'm also very excited about all the new ideas out there and the the potentials to finally get that on the street and get the, that into the product like like feature wise it's 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 so wide open and and uh Mordic has the best uh starting position for for all these things mm -hmm. uh, but that takes me to the one thing that's is, is really the, the root of it all to to myself and that's why i'm most excited about this I, that i guess is the people make who can make that happen and um in order to to grow that number of people we need a sort of snowball effect and we, we are at a point where we do get rolling and hopefully more be people help roll the initial snowball before it, it automatically rolls and rolls on and um that that has to do with with this local communities uh tomorrow we're gonna have a panel with the german german the language community here in the multi conference for instance it's a very good point uh that has to do with with initiatives and target teams and all, all those things ambassadors is fantastic ideas so many ideas um we, we have not been very successful over the last years to get those really rolling but but it would be so fantastic if we could get one yes yes uh, have the right impulse and get going and then the next and then the next um so you may hear from my voice it's that's the one thing i'm excited about most no i think it's it's also fully correct and also that's the momentum you want to have and at the moment it starts it's like a, a large spinning wheel the moment that it's it's moves and moves and moves and when months it goes faster and faster you have the momentum yeah. and you can thrive yeah. on that too and that's really cool 
yeah problem is it's not falling from the sky and and it's so hard to to get there and and so yeah. it, it's <laughs> as, 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 as fascinated I, I as i'm um as much as i'm fascinated by features i want to focus the little time that, that i have to spare um on on support that that cause okay i'll go um so so i'm excited as same as matthias that uh, the modic 5 is really um an improvement in for example developer experience uh we have auto wiring and that's that's like amazing uh thing to have um and um the, the modic 5 is also a little bit leaner we we dropped some features uh, uh, i know that everybody wants more and more features but we don't have the team to to maintain them all so i'm i'm really glad that we we have some smaller core that like I don't know, 80% of, of people use, and we dropped some features that only a uh, small uh, percentage of, of users uh, are using. Um, and that will allow us to focus more on those features that matter. And uh, from, from uh, the non-technical point of view, I'm, I, I would really like to see, and we already have uh, many of those, but uh, I would like to see more businesses um, around Modic that uh, are dependent on the project and uh, that will also give some uh, of their um, um, uh, money that they will make back to the project. Um, and we, we wouldn't be releasing Modic 5 uh, this month if there wouldn't be uh, uh, the, the people giving back money to the project because um, the community, all of you, who contribute um, have paid for the Twig conversion, which was a massive task. And um, without it, we, we wouldn't be here and we would be looking for uh, another uh, several months of development. Uh, so thank you, everybody. I can go next. Um, what am I most excited about? I think what most excites me is when people come together with a shared love and a shared passion. Um, so for me, the exciting thing is seeing, I mean, Eki, you almost stole my thunder because I was like, that's what I was going to say. <laughs> but it is that kind of seeing the love of Mortic in people all over the world and then seeing them take that out into the world and bring more people along with them. That's what really inspires me and that's what really gets me excited. And I think that's also what gets me excited for the potential growth of Mortic is that that is like that can grow exponentially. You, me and all of us in the leadership team, we only have so many hours in the day. But if we multiply that by the number of people who we have in the community and they multiply that by more people, we can get the message out there much more efficiently and much more effectively. And then we'll have, uh, you know, millions of people using water, which will be amazing. So, yeah, people, local communities, events, all of that really excites me. All right, Toby. You can end it with what you're excited about. Oh, sorry, I was muted. Okay, so I'm excited about um, now that Motic is independent. I'm excited, looking forward to seeing more contribution from the community, especially in terms of work. Okay, um, a lot of people come to the community to share what's not working or what they like to see in the product and the likes. But I would like to see more people contributing. If it's just maybe one hour every week, just one hour. And if, let's say, 1% of the community member contributes one hour every week to every aspect of the product, either marketing, education, or the main product itself, there's going to be a significant change in what we do. So um, I'm excited about being open, being fully independent and seeing that more contribution is going to come in in terms of from businesses and from individuals.
All right, thank you. I see that there's one question came in um, from Rahul Shinde. Um, what will be the frequency of the election for board members? I missed some parts of the session. Pardon me if this has already been covered. No, it hasn't been covered. Um, it yeah. was actually on the list, but I forgot to ask it. But uh, <laughs> go ahead. I can I can answer this one. Yeah. So it, it, in the proposal, I kind of outlined um, what what I think we should do. So some of the issues we we've, we've got to address is we don't want everyone's term to be ending at the same time. You don't want the entire council to be gone it, because their terms will end. So what we're proposing to do is in the initial election. We'll have like the top three people will have three years term. The next two people will have a two year term and the next two people will have a one year term. And so then they will expire on an annual basis and then we'll reelect everyone after that on a three year term. I'm pretty sure that's what's proposed, but it was a while ago. Um, that's for the community council. So if you want to know more about that, hop over to the governance model, click on the one about council, and that will explain all of that. It is a little bit complex because when you start, you have to set up all of that process so that you don't all finish at the same time. Um, hopefully that answers that question. All right. I see we slightly got over time, so we're going to conclude uh, this panel session. Um, I hope uh, everyone in got his answers they were looking for. Oh, one question, one. Not a question. Ah, it's just a comment. Okay, great. Yeah. Really nice that you congratulate the leadership team. Thank you, uh, Leonardo, for this. OK, everyone, um, have a nice afternoon, evening, morning, wherever you are. And I uh, hope to see you in the next panel session. Bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.